Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got a ton of news to go over with you. Starting with the first review on Intel's new CPUs, a new Valve console, GPU prices are skyrocketing, an HDD shortage, DDR5 is amazing, and AMD is adding more cores. But first, if you aren't subscribed, now is the perfect time. We've got Computex coming up with AMD, New AMD GPUs, new NVIDIA GPUs, though I absolutely understand everyone's frustration with that, and I'm gonna be discussing that a little bit today, but basically only 32% of those who watch the channel are subscribed, and that means less than 70% of you aren't. So please make sure to do that, as well as hit the bell icon. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's get right to our first story. Starting things off, Intel's new 8-core Tiger Lake H CPU has gotten one of its first reviews from Anantech. And it's pretty interesting, so let's go ahead and get right to it. Starting things off, one of the main thing Anantech talks about is power draw and temps. As you can see right here, uh, this review is based on the 11,980HK, which this one is configured to 65 watts. And Really quickly, as you can see right here, the 65 watt one, while it peaked pretty quickly before going into its normal 65 watts right here, we can see that it has some pretty massive dips to even below 30 watts. And the reason for that is almost certainly its temps. As you can see right here, it maxed out at a whopping 96 degrees Celsius. And yes, this is prime 95, so it's obviously going to be really difficult on the CPU, but they noticed this in multiple tests. Anyway, you can see that that the dips perfectly align with the temps. And that's just because it reaches its thermal limit, so it significantly drops the power draw as well as obviously frequency. And what Anantech ended up concluding was basically, you can see right here, they were having issues. Some even peaked at 96 degrees and the thermal tripping actually made it drop between 65 watts and 35 watt states. So it was not able to sustain the 65 watt state for any amount of time. So they basically confirmed, uh, like I said here, that they confirmed through several workloads and that made them conclude that the 65 watt mode, at least this reference system, which is what they were using, doesn't have adequate enough thermal dissipation to maintain 65 watts. So it just did not work. So what they ended up doing was lowering it down to 45 watts. And you can see with that configuration that they were able to sustain 45 watts fairly well, though it still peaked at upwards of 95 degrees Celsius, though that was during a pretty big wattage power draw before moving down to 45 watts. And at the same time, it does have fairly high temps. Now, believe it or not, I am actually really glad that they lowered this to 45 watts just because the one that they were able to test it with, which is the Ryzen 9 5980HS, is much closer at 35 watts. So 45 watts is obviously much closer than that 65 watts. And here you can see that at the 35 watts, it did maintain around 75 degrees Celsius, though at times it did get a little over 80. So fairly hot here at times as well. So yeah, with all of that said, how well did it perform? And as you can see right here with, uh, let's go over it, single threaded performance, it did pretty well, more or less beating out uh, AMD's CPU in most of these tests. With that said, when it comes to multi-threaded performance, which does likely have to do with some of the thermal issues that the CPU seems to have, we can see that overall, AMD's CPU beats it out. Now they do somewhat go back and forth, but Anantech themselves even said right here in terms of overall performance, the 45 watt uh, 11,980HK actually ends up losing to AMD's Ryzen 5980HS, even having 10 watts more TDP headroom. Don't forget, this is a 35 watt CPU versus Intel's being at 45 watts. So ultimately, AMD's still won. Now, with that said, this isn't gaming performance or anything like that, but it's still a bit disappointing. Remember that this is Intel, this isn't just their 10 nanometer part, this is their 10 nanometer super fin. And that's what Alder Lake is gonna be built on. So this is definitely really important. And like I said, it's, it's just a bit disappointing. You can see right here, they talked about the fact that while in the 65 watt mode, it was getting 40 to 44% higher TDP 
yet it only performed 9.4% better. So very little difference with massively higher power draw. Simply put, the fact that Intel's still having issues with this on a new node is, like I said, disappointing. And the disappointment doesn't stop there with our next story that comes from 3dcenter.org. In it, they did an update that they've actually been doing for a little while now on the current graphics card market in Europe, and it's really, really bad. For starters, it was looking good in the beginning of May, and I actually uh, do believe I discussed it wasn't this, it was Tom's Hardware's look at the market, and it looked like availability had actually gone up. Well, now it's decreased significantly and prices have gone up because of that. In fact, overall, what they're seeing is that the RTX 3000 cards on average reached three times MSRP, three times. Not only that, while yes, Andy's cards fared a little bit better, their cards reached around double MSRP. So it's basically just bad news after bad news. And unfortunately, it does not stop there, but before I get to that one, uh, I accidentally skipped over, apparently Valve's Gabe Newell somewhat. I really don't want to say for sure at all because it's fairly vague, but you can see that some people are discussing that they might be planning a console, maybe. But let's kind of go over this. Basically, during a talk with students in New Zealand, the head of Valve, Gabe Newell, was asked, will Steam be porting any games on consoles or will it just stay on PC? And in his answer, he stated, quote, you will get a better idea of that by the end of this year, and it won't be the answer you expect. You'll say, aha, now I get what he was talking about. Now, as I said, that obviously doesn't definitively say that there's going to be a new console or anything like that. He could just be saying, yeah, we're going to be porting everything. But the fact that he acts like we're almost going to be surprised by it, maybe Valve is making yet another attempt to bring a console to the market. I don't know. I guess you can decide, and obviously we will see before long. And moving on to the even worse news, I actually discussed this not too long ago. A new coin called Chia effectively uses your storage devices to mine. And because of that, it looks like HDD prices are already starting to go up. You can see here from Tom's Hardware, HDD pricing, particularly for high capacity models in the US, is rising steeply as enthusiasm for Chia cryptocurrency farming grows. Yeah, it's bad. Yet another part of PCs that seems to be going up, and this one looks almost directly tied to cryptocurrency. Now, I will say that as of right now, and I'm not really doing a story about it because I want to wait a little bit longer just to see, uh, you know, if it does end up rebounding. But I will say that right now, crypto, we're talking Bitcoin, Ethereum, pretty much everything has recently plummeted. I'm not 100% sure if this is a popped bubble, but let's just say it's not looking good. Unfortunately, though, it isn't happening quick enough as prices for HDDs, like I said, have gone up, but apparently they've gone up a lot with popular models getting as high as $100, $200, or even $300 more expensive. So if you're looking at buying an HDD, you may want to get on that really quickly. And I will say that if you go over to kit.co slash gamermeld, if you are interested, I do have some storage suggestions that I offer, and I'm likely going to be adding some more to that pretty soon. So make sure to check that out if you're interested in buying something before it potentially goes up even more. Though, like I said, it may be going down. Anyway, moving on really quickly, at least a little bit of good news. AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X is at its lowest price ever. You can see right here, it's at $424.99. This is AMD's newest 5000 series CPU. I will have an affiliate link down in the description if you're interested in that. It doesn't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Anyway, moving on, the next generation memory DDR5 is right around the corner. And with that, we're actually getting some really big information on it. Specifically, this new blog post from Course Air. So as we get down here and see, first up, we can see that DDR5 gets nearly double the bandwidth when we go from DDR4 3200. Now, of course, DDR4 has gotten higher than 3200, but I'm sure DDR5 will get higher than its initial stuff as well. With that said, 
One of the initial speeds they talk about is DDR5 6400. That's pretty unbelievable if I do say so myself. But what's even more unbelievable is that the capacity of single sticks of RAM has quadrupled when before we were looking at around 32 gigabytes for a single stick of DRAM, now we're looking at as high as 128. So probably one of the biggest jumps that we're gonna see is in capacity. And with the fact that we're seeing phones with eight, 10 or more gigabytes of memory, this is a huge, and at least in my opinion, much needed welcome. So DDR5, which almost certainly is gonna be releasing sometime later this year, remember that Intel's Alder Lake is gonna be supporting it, and hopefully one of AMD's newest CPUs, though we're not 100% sure. Either way, it's gonna be big. And speaking of big things, a new report that originally came from video cards has something really interesting in it. As you can see right here, this is actually a product roadmap for AMD's embedded CPUs. And I will say really quickly that it very clearly is old. You can see right here that the 7003 Epic CPUs for Zen 3 are in concept as of this, yet as of now, they've already released. So clearly this is an older roadmap, but something like this, I would say is almost definitely not gonna change in that time. And what I mean by something is a Zen 4 based Epic CPU are apparently going to have more than 64 cores, which means AMD is finally going to be upping the core counts of their Zen 4 based CPUs. Now, we don't know definitively if they're going to be upping the core counts of Ryzen. This doesn't necessarily mean that, but this could mean that the actual chiplets have more cores on them, which almost certainly does mean that Ryzen would get more cores. And the fact that, you know, Zen 4 is going to be based on five nanometers, there's almost certainly going to be room to add more cores. So fingers crossed on that, that would be a pretty interesting development. Anyway, with all of that said, that does do it for today. I hope you liked the video. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too, too much, but some really interesting news. Once again, if you liked the video, please make sure to subscribe and really what do you think is going to happen with next gen Ryzen? Is it going to get more cores? Does it need more cores? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.